Uh, it's great to be here. I love doing this. I love being a comedian. Uh, people always think it's a hard job though. You know? Like I tell people I do stand up, people are always like, oh, stand up. <laughs> Gotta be the toughest job. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> Brain surgeon. <laughs> Bit tougher. <laughs> you know? Like if I make a mistake, eh, people get bored. <laughs> <laughs> See him sitting down the front. A brain surgeon, he makes a mistake. People still look like that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, people applauding that, you are going to hell. Uh, <laughs> terrible people. Uh, no, it is. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I, I, I want to point that out because people have this stereotype about comedians. People always want comedians to be depressed. Do you, know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the stereotype. They're all like, oh, you know, just the choose the clown. Oh, he's laughing on the outside, crying on the inside. Oh, choose the clown. Right? I don't think comedians are more depressed than other people. I just think when you're a comedian and you tell people you're depressed, no one cares. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? People actually enjoy that. You know, like if I came out here tonight, I was like, hey, I'm on antidepressants. <laughs> See, these people are laughing already. <laughs> right, right. But you know, you know, if I go, hey, I'm an antidepressants. Can't see the point anymore. You'd all be like, ooh, he's a tortured artist. <laughs> How wonderful, right? It's not like that with other jobs, is it? Like, right? If you, if, like, if you got on a plane, <laughs> pilot came on like, I'm an antidepressants. <laughs> Can't see the point anymore. <laughs> No one's gonna be like, oh, tortured pilots. <laughs> How fantastic, right? But uh, I am very happy. I have to point out, this, this is where I'm at, right? I have to point out that I'm happy because I'm at this weird point in life where I tell people I'm happy and people don't believe me. <laughs> right? Like, I am, I am very poor, I am very single, I am not very famous. People think I'm too happy for where I'm at in life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, like, you probably have conversations with people and they're like, oh, how you going? And you're like, yeah, I'm good. And they're like, oh, good for you. What I get is a lot of this. Hey, Michael, how you going? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And they're like, wow, despite everything. <laughs> What's the spirit? What? It happens all the time. Like, I am very poor, right? I went into the bank the other day that, you know, the teller asked me how I was going. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing good. She's like, I've seen your accounts. <laughs> Guess again. <laughs> right? I'm very single. You know, when I first joined Facebook, I put my relationship status as single, right? And, you know, I was getting all those targeted ads. Hey, are you a single guy? Are you looking for single local ladies? All that stuff, right? But uh, I've been single a long time. I have never changed that status on Facebook. So now I'm getting targeted ads like, hey, are you a monk? <laughs> Are you looking for 10% off ecclesiastical robes? <laughs> Tell me more, Facebook, right? Like, I, I am, uh, I'm not very famous, right? I did a gig out in the country. They ran an ad in the local paper um, to advertise the comedy show. They said, comedy show featuring Michael Connell and funny comedy friends. <laughs> yeah, that's how they wrote it, funny. In inverted commas. I had to ring up the paper and said, hey, look, there's a bit of a typo, a uh, bit of a mistake. Maybe you want to have a word to one of your journalists. And they go, oh, yeah, sorry. That is a mistake. We'll run the ad again next week. It'll all be sorted. I'm like, great. Following week, I've opened the paper. They've written comedy show featuring Michael Connell and funny comedy friends. <laughs> That is worse, right? <laughs> so like people, people kind of expect me with my life, people expect me to be sad, right? And they're surprised when I'm not. You know, like I have, you know, like what I have is, right? You know when like a millionaire's depressed and people can't understand why he's sad? Right, I have the opposite of that, right? Like people are going up to the mil millionaire, they're like, hey mate, you know, cheer up. You can do anything. You know, the world's your oyster. Then they're coming over to me like, hey, buddy, what are you smiling about? <laughs> <laughs> no.
no one's fooled, right? And I, maybe it's my fault, right? Because, uh, because you know, people say, are you happy? And I'm like, yeah, I'm happy. And happy is a very vague word, right? So when I say I'm happy, they're like, really? Really? Like, and I'm like, yeah. Well, I'm not, you know, walking around singing zippity doo but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm content. I'm relaxed. I'm, I'm okay. I have a good flow of life. I mean, do you know what I mean? And they're like, yeah, I get what you're saying. You're on Valium. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I'm not. And they're like, well, what is it, Michael? Why is it? Why are you not sad despite your very tough life? And I'm like, well, I think it's probably stoicism. And they're like, oh, what is that? Is that some kind of antidepressant? <laughs> <laughs> are you are you nuts? And I'm like, no, no, stoicism. It's a form of uh, ancient Greek and Roman philosophy. And they're like, ah. Oh. He's nuts. <laughs> right? And I, I understand why they have that reaction, right? Because people, people don't think philosophy is useful, right? I, un I understand. I know. I did a, I did a philosophy degree myself. Um, <laughs> yes. yes, that's right. That's right. I have a philosophy degree. So that means I am poor, but I know why. <laughs> That's what you get in philosophy, right? My my philosophy degree would be what you imagine your uh, philosophy degree would be like. You know, we we you know come in, we do questions like you know, if a tree falls in the woods, no one's around, does it make a sound? Uh, now you might think the answer is yes, or you might think the answer is no. But what I learned is the deeper truth, which is that knowing the answer won't get you a job. <laughs> never comes up in job interviews, you know? They're like, so Michael, tree falls in the woods, no one's around, does it make a sound? Yes, it does. Because even though there's no one there to perceive them, sound waves still exist. Oh, well done. Welcome to Target. <laughs> <laughs> you are hired, right? <laughs> And that's what it was like, you know, we'd come to class, the tutor would be doing things, you know, we'd have discussions like, uh, you know, the tutor would say things like, what is society? And what is humanity? And then at the end of the year, they'd be like, Michael, did you do the test? I'd be like, what is a test? <laughs> They're like, you failed. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And I, I was, possibly it was me, right? Probably I was part of the problem because I was doing this philosophy degree when I was like 19, you know, like straight out. I thought I knew everything. You know, I thought I know all this about philosophy stuff. I know all the philosophy. I'm going to be teaching them about philosophy, right? First day of classes, I'm sitting in the lecture theater. This guy walks in. He's like, oh, mate, mate, you're not in here. And I was like, yeah, I get what you're saying. You're saying like none of us really here, are we? He's like, no, 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 mate. I mean, uh, I mean, like this class isn't happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Matrix. It's like there is no spoon in there. He's like, no, no. I mean, this lecture's been cancelled. I am the cleaner. <laughs> I was just like, right. I am the walrus. <laughs> I was like, is this what we're doing? It wasn't what we were doing. <laughs> he turned the lights out. I sat there in the dark for like 20 minutes. Oh, this is deep. <laughs> I'm learning a lot in this lecture, right? But see, that's what philosophy was like when I did it at uni, right? But philosophy wasn't always like that, right? Like back in ancient Greece, philosophy, very popular. Right, like back in ancient Athens, all around the city, there was all these groups of uh, philosophers that used to hang out doing philosophy. Uh, so on like east side, you had the skeptics. Uh, south side was the Epicureans. Uh, west side was the Crips. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Uh, that never, that joke never gets a great laugh. But uh, I just like to know who's into both philosophy and West Coast rap. So. Um, <laughs> Well done to you guys. Uh, in, ancient, in ancient Athens, there was a bunch of guys called the Stoics. And they were a bunch of philosophers. They used to do philosophy at a place called the Stoa. Uh, it was a porch at the front of a gym. And that's where they did their philosophy. Just, just think about that, right? They were doing philosophy at the front of a gym. That means in ancient Athens, people would be walking around, seeing guys out, of the, fr out the front of a gym going, oh, probably philosophers. <laughs> And I mean, I do that today, but I am being sarcastic. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> the Stoics, they're all, you know, they're all ancient Greeks and Romans. They all had names like, you know, that sound a bit like medicine. Uh, Seneca, Epictetus, Metamucil. Um, <laughs> Uh, they'd be out the front, they'd do their philosophy there, just to, just to people in the street passing by, wearing their togas. You all know what I'm saying? You know what a toga is? You know, what, you know, it's just a white sheet, they just drape it over. One shot. I don't think I'd learn anything in those lectures because they were wearing togas. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, the guy would be there, he'd be talking about duty and honour, and I'd be standing in the crowd going, wow, I can see his nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He'd be like, happiness comes from living in accordance with nature. Woo! <laughs> Off-putting, you know? Anyway, the Stoics, uh, they, they didn't do philosophy like we did philosophy at my university, right? They thought you could use philosophy to work out practical problems, like everyday, real-life problems, right? So people would be coming into with problems like, you know, my wife's cheating on me, someone insulted me at the marketplace, and they'd try and work it out. They weren't doing it like we did it at my university degree, right? No one was coming up to them like, help, I got attacked by barbarians. They were like, well, what is an attack? <laughs> oh, you stabbed me. What is getting stabbed? <laughs> Instead, they were big fans of reason. They liked using the Socratic method. You guys know what the Socratic method is? No? All right. So the Socratic method thing came up, invented by a guy called Socrates, right? Very smart philosopher. Came with this thing called the Socratic method. That's basically where you walk up to people in the street, start asking them questions, keep asking them questions, getting people to challenge their beliefs. And the interesting thing is, you still sometimes see that today, right? Like the other day, I was on the bus, there was some dude in there. He was like, Oi! What are you looking at? I was like, Ooh, the Socratic method. <laughs> He's a free range philosopher. Right? Of course, he kept asking me questions, getting me to challenge my beliefs. Do you want a kick in the head, mate? <laughs> I'd always assumed no, but can we ever know the truth? Uh, kick away. Kick away, mate, right? And the Stoics, the problem that, one of the problems they were trying to work out was why are people unhappy, right? Why do we have unpleasant emotions? You know, because people, you know, people often do, you know, and, you know, they're sad or angry or depressed. You know, I'm talking in general, not just at my shows. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's weird that we, that, that we have those emotions, right? Because people don't want to feel these things right people you know the world would look very different if you liked being sad right for a start you wouldn't be out watching stand-up comedy you'd all be out watching stand-up tragedy <laughs> some of you like i am watching stand-up tragedy <laughs> ow ow right so why why do we why do we get upset why aren't we happy all the time and when you ask these people always people always say well michael you know it's because things don't go your way all the time this is what people think. People think it's because, you know, there's a lot of things you can't control, which is true, right? There's a lot of things you can't control, you know? You work really hard, and then the economy crashes. You know, you try to be nice to people, and then they're rude. You know, I'm throwing out these great jokes. You give me a so-so response. <laughs> <laughs> there are things you don't control, right? And then sometimes it's a surprise. Like, I, growing up, I didn't think life was going to be like that, right? When I was growing up, I thought life was going to be like a game of, uh, the game of life. Do you know what I mean? Like the game of life, ironically, nothing like the game of life. You know what I'm talking about? The game, you know, you move the little pieces around the circle and you know, you get the house. And that's not very accurate. I reckon we should make that more accurate, right? I reckon the game of life should be just be a box full of cool things. You know, someone opens it and you, you're like, oh, can I have the car? No. <laughs> can, can I have the cool job? No. Nah. <laughs> oh well, what 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 have you got for me? Arthritis. <laughs> Shazam. <laughs> I'm also taking your grandma. Come on, right? <laughs> that's 
But oh, life's more like that. Oh, life's like uh, life's like a game of pass the parcel. You all know pass the parcel, obviously. Yeah, you pass the parcel around the circle of kids. Eventually, one kid wins the prize just out of sheer luck. All the other kids get nothing. Right? That that game shouldn't be called pass the parcel. That should be called life's not fair. <laughs> I reckon we should make that more educational. I reckon we should just wrap up like an empty box. <laughs> right? Just pass that around the circle. Because then eventually some kid will win it. He'll open the, open the box. He's like, oh, oh, what did I win? The ability to handle disappointment. <laughs> That's what you got, Barry. Because <laughs> right? not enough people are learning that lesson, right? I know, because I, I fly Jetstar a lot. <laughs> you know, you're a... I, I'm a poor comedian. They're a cheap airline. It's gonna happen, right? And, but when they, they, you know, they they cancel flights like at the drop of the hat. And whenever whenever they cancel a flight, there's always someone at the airport just just freaking out. You know, just they're ah oh, no 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 no. Like he's gonna say no enough. They're like, okay, flight's back on. We were, we were just testing you. Everybody's there. You know, he's there. No! No, this can't happen! No! No, you just want someone to walk up to him like, Excuse me, sir. Did you ever play Pass the Parcel? <laughs> did, you, did you not learn the lesson of that game? Look, there are things you don't control. Which, by the way, that should be Jetstar's slogan. Uh, <laughs> mm, uh, Jetstar, there are things you don't control. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, you don't count for much, right? And it's true, right? In the big picture, you don't have a lot of control. So many things in life, right? I was saying this, actually, at a show the other the other night, and this guy came up and he's like, oh, Michael, I know exactly what you mean. And I'm like, oh, why is that? He's like, well, you know, I recently went to India, and I did, like, this meditation thing. I meditated with the guru and had all these visions and got in touch with my higher power. And, you know, it just taught me how little I control in life. And I was like, wow. Because I had a similar experience when I went to India. Because I got really bad food poisoning. <laughs> you know, I was having visions. I, ran, I met my higher power. It was Salmonella. <laughs> just like, this, this guy, you know, he was stumbling around the jungle looking for his spirit animal. I just got mine from room service at the hotel. It was a chicken tikka masala. <laughs> You know, I just ate it. It was like, mm, time for a magical journey. <laughs> you know, and then like, this, this is what you learn when you get horrible food poisoning. It's just how little control you have over anything. And you can just forget that so in, so easily, right? Like, you know, you you because you do, right? You, you flick it through your phone or you're driving your car and you're like, yeah, I can control my life. Then you get horrible food poisoning. You're like, I can't control my guts. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure Vindaloo is Indian for reality check. <laughs> you know, because no one's getting sick like, king of the world! <laughs> master of the universe! Like, that's not what it makes you feel, right? And that's how little control you have in life. You don't even control your own body, really. You don't. Like, I, I don't control this, right? Like, I, this, I try to look good, I do my best, but then I get to a point where I'm like, look, Things you don't control. <laughs> Which, by the way, this is what I say on dates. Uh, <laughs> I, I meet a girl for the first time. She's like, mm. I'm like, yeah, not what I wanted either. <laughs> All right? Things you don't control. <laughs> but according, so there's a lot of things you don't control. You practically, you practically control nothing. But there is one thing you control, according to the Stoics, which is your thoughts. All right? You control your thoughts. Not all your thoughts, obviously. Sometimes thoughts just pop into your head. By Michael CD. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows where these ideas come from? He's available for parties. Who knows? <laughs> Sign up for his mailing list on his website. Who knows, right? But the point is, you can agree or disagree with the thoughts in your head, right? And that's important because that controls your emotions, right? All right, the way I usually explain this uh, is here in Melbourne, uh, when you catch the trains, they, uh, they always make announcements during peak hour. They're always like, when you're on the platform, they're like, during peak hour, trains come every 15 minutes. And there's always someone there going, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the guy from the airport, you know. 
No, no, it should be ten. Should be ten. No, no. They shouldn't. Sh- they shouldn't make the trains come faster. What they should do? They should change the announcements so people change what they think, and that'll change what they feel. Right? Instead of being on there and being like, during peak hour, trains come every fifteen minutes. What they should be saying is like, in parts of India, trains come every two days. <laughs> Then people would be catching the train like, wow, this is like 48 hours early. <laughs> this is a very convenient train. <laughs> they should do it with all their announcements because all their announcements, they, you know, they say things like, oh, we're trying to keep the train clean. It always smells like urine. You know, <laughs> we're trying to keep the trains on time. They're always like five minutes late. No, every one of their ads should be like, hey, every one of our trains, it's going to be an hour late. Smell like rotting meat. Because then you'd get on the train like, this is better than I expected. <laughs> I can barely smell the urine. This is, this is a good service, right? They apologise when they cancel trains. You know, like, the 7.15 to Dananong's been delayed. You know, Metro apologises. And people are like, this is appalling. This is terrible, right? Don't apologise. Change what you say. That'll change what people think. And that'll change what they feel, right? What they should do, they should just get on there and be like, uh... There's a war in the Middle East. <laughs> There's kids starving in Africa. And the 7.15 to Dandenong has been delayed. <laughs> if you're upset about the train, you're a terrible person. <laughs> yeah. or, or, they should, or they should just get really honest with people. Just get on there and be like, The 7.15 to Dandenong has been delayed. What are you gonna do? <laughs> what, you gonna walk to Dandenong? <laughs> Mate, I don't think so. <laughs> Dude, you don't even know where I am. Come at me, bro, come at me. <laughs> Psych up, right? The point is, like, how you see things shapes how you feel about things, right? People are always like, oh, the train's late and that's making me angry. No, no, if the train being late made you angry then it would make everyone on the platform angry but that's not what happens right the you know they, they announced the 715 to dead dog has been delayed you know the, the businessman on the platform he's angry you know teenager sitting on the bench he's bored homeless guy on the tracks relieved <laughs> very relieved <laughs> right this is the thing right it, your thoughts shape your emotions right if the train's late you think that's bad you get angry Right? Trains late, you think that doesn't matter, you get indifferent. Trains late, you think that's arousing, you get <laughs> arrested. You know? that's, that's what happens, right? And this, this, is, this is for everything in life, right? For example, I live in, uh, I live in a rough part of Melbourne, I live in Footscray, there's a, there's a lot of drugs, right? But then on the other hand, I live in Footscray, there's a lot of drugs, right? Like, <laughs> a crime problem or a party opportunity i don't know right the point is what i'm trying to say is choosing your thoughts choose your emotions how you think shapes how you feel what i'm saying is if you don't enjoy this show that's your fault (laughs) don't don't be sitting there thinking well he's not as funny as jerry seinfeld you need to be like, nah, more laughs than Schindler's List, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pe- people not applauding that, you are wrong. Um, that is right, right? Anyway, this is the thing. If you are getting upset about something, it's usually because you have some sort of irrational thought in your mind, right? Which is what happens all the time when I'm catching the train, right? Those guys getting angry, they're always being angry in irrational ways. You see it, like they cancel the train, they're like, ah, oh, unbelievable. Oh, it's the third time this week. I can't believe it. You're like, what? You can't believe it and it's the third time this week. <laughs> How easily surprised is this guy? <laughs> like they're never, they're never upset in a rational way because that's impossible, right? You can, you can never, you'll never see that. Can you imagine that? Getting upset and being rational at the same time? Like, what would that look like? The 7.15 to Dandenong has been delayed. Ah, it's not what I wanted, but I'll be fine. (laughs) The 4.30 to Knox will not run today. Ah, can't be helped. (laughs) (laughs) 
this this service cancelled until further notice. At least I've got my health. <laughs> no one gets angry like that, right? Uh, like if you if you just this is the thing. There is there is so many things you can't control, right? You, Thinking that you can be happy by having things always go your way is a very irrational thought, right? And if you think you have to have something to be happy or have something happen to be happy, then, you know, it turns life into a game of, like, of, like, piggy in the middle or keep away. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? You know what, you know, piggy in the middle? People nodding got bullied in high school. Uh, <laughs> people, if you don't know, is that thing, you know, is that thing in high school someone would steal your hat and they're like, oh, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. It's very frustrating. You know, you're like, I have to have that hat. And they're like, yeah, well, dance for it, dance for it. And it's frustrating because you can't, you can't control external things. So you thought those guys were bullies. No, stoic philosophers. That's what, that's what they were. They were teaching us a valuable life lesson, right? That you have to find happiness in here, right? And we never, people don't learn that. People never learn that. Like you go tonight, you go to any nightclub, there'll be someone there who hates going to nightclubs. So why are they there? because they want to pick up it's because they want to meet someone it's like they've gone i have to be in a relationship and someone's like yeah well dance for it, dance for it. <laughs> <laughs> did i did i mention i was single uh <laughs> like Lady, you see me after the show, come make me dance for it. I totally will. <laughs> but what, I, what, what I'm saying is, like, you gotta, you got to change the way you see things, right? This, this is what stoicism is about. It's focusing on what you can control, right? And I'm, not saying, I'm not saying change your thoughts and everything's going to go your way, right? Things are going to happen that you won't like, right? I know. I've got some terrible jokes coming up, right? <laughs> Get ready for that, right? But but when you when you stop uh, stop thinking things have to go a certain way or controlling things, you, you know, stop having so much irrational thoughts. You stop having so many unpleasant emotions, right? And then just you sort of feel happy, sort of by default. Do you know what I mean? Because like the happiness that was always there, it's just hard to feel it when you're feeling other things, you know? Because you can't really feel two emotions at the same time, can you? Like, no one's, no one's walking around like, Ah! Oh, he cut me off in traffic and that's a beautiful sunset! <laughs> and this is, why, this is why I don't get upset about my, my, my tough life, right? People are always like, Michael, you should be sad because you're poor. I'm like, no, I'm unmuggable. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're like, your house is terrible. It's, you know, all the walls are falling apart. There's holes everywhere. I'm like, no, they're not holes. They are bonus windows. <laughs> They're like, come on, Michael, come on. You're very poor. You have to live off two-minute noodles, instant noodles, you know, eating them all the time. They're very bland. You can't enjoy that. I'm like, no, I love eating those noodles. I love them because I've got a trick. I've got like a secret ingredient. Do you, do you know what makes anything taste great? Hunger. That is, it's like magic. <laughs> you, you never see that on MasterChef, do you? <laughs> Oh, these noodles aren't cooked enough. No, Matt, you're not hungry enough. <laughs> you, you wait till they kick you off the doll, then you'll love them noodles, right? And they are very bland, right? Like, if you serve them at a fancy restaurant, people would be upset. But that's because they're sitting there thinking like, hey, this should be steak. But I love them because I'm looking at them like, hey, this could be nothing. <laughs> right? So I enjoy those noodles. And it, it takes me a while. It takes a lot of practice to start thinking more rationally you know like sometimes i'll take all the money i've made from a comedy gig like 20 bucks and <laughs> i'll go to the supermarket and i'm like yeah i should buy some donuts because you know the donuts they'll make you happy michael then i think no no the donuts won't make you happy what's in here makes you happy michael so after a while of staring at the donuts i'm just like bah i don't need you which is very rational but from the outside must look pretty crazy <laughs> Because people at the supermarket, they can't hear what I'm thinking. All they see is me walk in, stare at the donuts for three minutes, and then be like, but I don't need you. <laughs> He's breaking up with the donuts again. <laughs> He's in here every week, right? But this is, this is the thing, it's stoicism. It's not just a philosophy, it's like a practice. You've got to practice doing it, right? And the, the Stoics, they said, you know, they had all these exercises and meditations and things you could do. And it's sort of, it's supposed to become more automatic. Uh, I'm too lazy for all that. 
So, you know, what I'm going to do, right, I'm going to just, I'm just going to get a tattoo that says you're an idiot. Because <laughs> that's basically what you learn, right? You, you start out thinking, you know, the instant knee-jerk reaction is like, the world is stupid. And then you think it through and then you're like, oh, no, I'm an idiot. <laughs> right? So I'm just going to cut out the middle man. I'm just going to get a tattoo. So then the next time I'm getting upset about something, I'm like, oh, why am I so angry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll also be very helpful, you know, if ever I'm like, why did I get this tattoo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? I get, I get better every day. I get a little bit better, a little less irrational, a little happier. You know, it gets, goes by. And I think that's great, you know, and I, I like it. The only downside is that I am a comedian. And people don't really want to see a happy comedian. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like when you come out and see a comedian, you want the comedian to be on stage like, oh, how bad are telemarketers? You know what makes me angry? My ex-wife. You know, all that sort of thing. But I'm doing all this stoicism. I'm practicing all this philosophy. I'm not having any of these negative emotions. Come see me in like a year's time. I'm going to be out on stage like, hey, how about airline food? It's all right. <laughs> Do you know what makes me angry? My irrational thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, come see that show. And hey, if you don't like it, just remember, in parts of India, <laughs> people don't get comedy shows. Right? <laughs>